Okay, we're back now. So, so you 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 cut your uh, throg's neck. You know, Bronx boy goes all the way down to the village, experiences some mind blowing jazz. The, the, back then, they let young people in. You know, they let young people hang for some reason. You know, <laughs> so so yeah, yeah. And, and you know, later on, you know, as I said, I was going to the clubs before I was legal because you know you're supposed yeah. to be eighteen. That's what I mean. Yeah, uh, I wasn't eighteen until. Uh, 1968. Mm. No, I was 18, 1967. I was just yeah. 18 in 1967. But you know, we're talking about 65, 66. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I was yeah. still you know 16, 17 or whatever. Yeah. But still, yeah. you know, going ahead. So, 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 you, so, you, so, you, so, you have all this background stuff like that. Now, now you're about to talk about AB Spellman and, and his relationship with uh, BAI, with with, with, uh, with WBI Radio, uh, the FM station. Now, the FM didn't come. Uh, well, well, how'd you find out all, all this stuff? What's going on? Well, FM, first of all, is remember, uh, first of all, you know, when we first started having radios, you know, it was stri strictly AM radio, you know, with mm -hmm. WWRL, like I said, WEDO, some of the other stations or whatever, you know, that well, was, it was it, we, only listen, we, we only listened to WWL and, and WABC. We had to say, you had the schizophrenic thing. You yeah, know, WABC. The, 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 the yeah, good guys and, you know, the black, you know. And all, yeah, all of that <laughs> stuff. Frank, Mary, yeah. Mary Decay, you know, all of these things, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. now, yeah. Uh, what happens is Percy Sutton and all these other folks go ahead and invest and they go ahead, they create inner city broadcasting, and they create WLIBFM. Mm -hmm. Now, WLIBFM, which, you know, later on becomes WBLS, mm -hmm. when it starts, it's a mostly jazz station. Yeah. Del Hill, Ed William. Mm -hmm. So, in response to this, Many of us went ahead and said, okay, well, look, we're going to buy an FM radio because now we got something that we need to listen to. Yeah. So, you know, the incentive was listening to a black-owned radio station that was playing this music that people refer to here as jazz. Mm. Okay, so now... Now, hold on a second, hold, hold on a second. The way you said that, the way you said that, it sounds very political. People refer to as jazz. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, it's the origin of the term. You know, the term is, you know, jazz. And, you know, jazz could mean, you know, several things. You know, and one, you know, it could mean sexual intercourse. In another, you know, uh, instance... It could mean somebody trying to cheat you or dip you. I mean, it was these things. And, you know, supposedly it comes out of the fact that, you know, uh, this music in its early days was a background music for, you know, brothels and houses of, you know, prostitution and juke joints, et cetera, you know. So people call it other things. And then one thing I always uh, refer to is that uh, Baba Randy Weston used to talk about when he was talking about the music he played, he said, I play African rhythms. Okay. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. No, I don't, I don't play jazz. I play African mm -hmm. rhythms. Uh, people like Ahmed Abdullah talk about, you know, this is the music of the spirit. I like he that talks one. about it in those mm -hmm. particular mm -hmm. terms. Yeah. And I think that, you know, when we go ahead and use that definition, you know, if we believe in self-determination, defining ourselves, then we have to define, you know, what this music is. Sometimes we have to refer to it as jazz so that other people know what we're talking about. But in many instances, they don't know what we're talking about because, you know, they may be talking about Kenny G when mm. we're talking about John Coltrane and Albert I. Mm. And they'll say, well, both things are jazz, but well, are they? <laughs> You know? So anyway, you know, A.B. Spellman uh, had this show on WBAI. And then WBAI also, you know, at, at that time, you know, not too many black people on WBAI. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was the A.B. Spellman show and, you know, he would play the music and talk about it and you know, on occasion interview folks. 
And I would listen to that, you know, I, I would, uh, you know, kind of religiously listen to that. And um, later on, I guess every once in a while, there would be some other shows on BAI. But, you know, most of it at that particular point was, I mean, it was really, really a white station. I mean, you know, that's what it was. Man. It, it really was. I had the, um, when I was at NYU, I actually went up to the church, you know, when we were doing, we were engaged in struggles mm -hmm. at New York University. Uh, I had to go up to the uh, the church one time. The church means the church. Uh, the, the church meeting in BAI was like what sixty four. BAI, Street? yeah. When BAI was was in the church, you yeah. know, to, to to be up there, and it was just a bunch of you know, you know, just a bunch of white people there. It's like, well, you, well, you say you say I'm white so people, but here. but you say white people, but more you might as well just say hippie, no? <laughs> yeah, you could say that. I mean, it was you know the, the counterculture and you know, all of that. Okay, counterculture. And I mean, and some of yeah. it was good, of course, but I mean. You know, we, we have to understand, I mean, at this particular point, that there was this energy, you know, and, and part of that energy was, I mean, I'll give you an example. Uh, brothers who just turned 80, he turned 80, I guess, uh, in, in September. Uh, his first name for, for his name, Winston. Uh, he was older, of course, than us, and he was at NYU. He used to work in the bookstore, mm -hmm. and he decided to become a student, you know, because you could go ahead and get, you know, free tuition if you worked there and stuff. So he came on, and, you know, because he was a little older than us, I guess, you know, he was one, you know, prepared to take on a leadership role at the station. Not at the station, at the, at the, at the school, I'm talking about BAI, at NYU, right? Mm -hmm. So we formed this black students organization, she knows Richie Havens because Richie Havens grew up in Bed Stuy in Brooklyn, mm. right? Okay. We're we're having a demonstration. We're shutting the school. We're having a strike at New York University, and here comes Richie Havens, who nobody had heard of before, mm -hmm. and he comes into the lobby of the main building at NYU, and he plays, and we're like, "Wow, man." Look at this, you know, and and Richie Havens doesn't blow up again, uh, or really blow up until Woodstock. So sixty nine, yeah. What, what, what year was that? What year are you talking about right now? 66, 67? Sixty six, no, sixty seven. No, sixty eight. Seven, maybe. Yeah, sixty seven. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sixty seven. But you know, it's it's this kind of energy and interaction and various things. You know, I was telling uh, you know somebody an older white woman at the station at BAI now, you know, she was talking about Arlo Guthrie because I was talking about my garden at the back and stuff. And Arlo Guthrie had written some song about the gardens. And I said, man, I remember Arlo Guthrie, you know, he used to hang out in Washington Square Park. You know, yeah. we were very often in regards to NYU. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I knew Arlo Guthrie back years and years ago. I mean, because, you know, these people were around. Yeah, you know, it was Bob a big, it was a big folk scene. And you know, that, down that, was, the block. that was a village folk scene. We had, yeah, a, had yeah. a whole bunch of people, you know. I mean, you, you know, what's that? All the people went went through there at that time, you know, comedians yeah, and everything. No question, yeah. no question. But anyway, A. B. Spellman gave me a reason to listen to WBAI, mm -hmm. you know, and I I did so. I didn't listen to much of it. It was very targeted because you know I wasn't interested in in you know, some of the stuff. Julius Lester oh, yeah. you know, ended up with a radio program. I remember. I knew Julius. I remember Julius Lester at BAI. I heard him on BAI, but I wasn't listening to BAI at the time. You know, right before that yeah. era, right before that era, that's when they had this commentary when you had Iron Rand, you had Malcolm X, you had all these people, were, uh, Buckley, all these people were on BAI. They had commentary programs on BAI. Right, right. You know? Well, you know, Brother Malcolm is assassinated in 65, and that's a little probably before I knew about. Um, that's what I'm saying, way before this. Way before, I'm just saying, with BA existed like 1960, but they yeah. had all this eclectic stuff, you know what I mean? Because that's yeah. when the, the Greenspan used to be a toady for, for Iron Rand. The people don't really understand yeah. all this stuff, you know? But that's all the whole BAI era. You know who knows all about this stuff is Jim Freund. He has the whole history, yeah, yeah. you know? Huh? <laughs> I talked to him See, a lot. But in those days, still, you know, 65 to early 60, we don't have FM radio. That's right. 
you know, in our community, we don't have FM and we don't have a need to have FM radio because there's nothing mm-hmm. specifically that's speaking to us yet. Mm-hmm. And that only, as I said, happens when we have WLIB FM, mm-hmm. you know, inner cities has the FM station and the AM station. Exactly. On the AM station, they play their rhythm and blues and do that. And then on the FM station, they go ahead and they play jazz. And that's how they had, uh, you know, marked out their territory, yeah. you know, in those very early days. And it was a successful, uh, successful move. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know what happened to Ed Williams after, you know, he left, uh, you know, WLIB. And, well, it's not even a matter of whether he left. It's probably WLIB left him mm. because they changed the call letters. They went to WBLS uh, and you know- then they, uh, they changed their programming from jazz programming to uh, rhythm and blues, uh, whatever Frankie Crocker wanted to play. Well, that's the time I can, let me tell you a story about that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in my, you know, my, my room in the Patterson Projects. But my brother had gone. My brother, one, both my brothers were gone. So I had the room to myself. So I had Frankie Crocker on when he first, when they first turned to B, B, uh, uh, BLS, and he was the first person to play a long form. Uh, uh, you know, because they went for jazz, but long form, I guess you would call it, I don't want to say popular, but R&B, and that, and I'm telling you what, I remember clearly that time when he played Isaac Hayes by the time I get to Isaac Phoenix. Hayes. Yep. He played that. Yep. That was the first time yep. 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 that th- something that long had played on the radio and was freaking uh-huh. people out. I remember yeah, when he, I remember yeah. when he did, and he, let me tell you a little, little tiny, tiny, tiny. You, 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 as you know, I know a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of a, a, a Prince appreciator because of a number of reasons. But Prince, in a rehearsal thing, he says not a rehearsal. Yeah, I guess it's for something like uh, if I was your, I would go for something. And one of those songs, and he says, um, he says uh, WBLS with. Uh, where, we, where you can hear Isaac Hayes, Sheila E. But he, uh, he just sends Isaac Hayes, and then he goes on to his whole band thing. So I'm just trying to think, wow, how did this guy know that Isaac Hayes was the first person that Frankie Crocker Proc- Proc- played in that long form? So somebody, some history is around here someplace. It's, it's in the yeah, whatever. Yeah. But now, also, as we talk about FM, we have to remember Jocko. Oh, yeah. Uh not the original Jocko, not the Jocko from the Rocket Ship show, which was on a black radio station, or at least a you know a black, even if it wasn't owned by black people. But Jocko, uh, the the the, uh, the brother who was on the FM rock station. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I I think okay. I think no, no. I think you're talking about Roscoe. Roscoe. Yes. Because Roscoe, he, Roscoe, Roscoe, Roscoe yeah. was a pioneer. He was the only black on WNEW. Right. Roscoe. Yeah, because he, he was in Jocko, that line. Man. Because, you know, Roscoe later on went to BAI. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You but, know, you know, and, and, it, but anyway, but, you know, Roscoe becomes important because, you know, he is this black voice on rock radio. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you, you think about it, you know, you, you look at, you know, all of the pioneers in regards to that. You know, Chambers Brothers, I mean, stuff like that, man, you know, who to this day do not get their due at all, man. You know, it's it's crazy, man. It, well, it really is crazy. Well, you, you know, know Spike Lee uses the Chambers yeah. Brothers and, you know, the five bloods or whatever. It is. Well, that's a shout out. That's a shout out. Yeah, you, no. You'd be surprised. Right, let me go back to Roscoe for one tiny second, because, as you know, he was a DJ when I was uh, when, when I was. um the you know, arts director and I asked him once I said Roscoe you know why are you here I mean you know you get you uh, I think he was still doing some work well first of all he was doing the commercial the, the you know the the, the voiceover for those uh, um for like movie you know tree movie trailers and stuff like that so he, right. he had his thing and he said well you know what it is he said this one we have 505 eighth Avenue he said when I'm going at when I'm he still was doing some DJ work in other places he said when I walk down the halls there all they talk about is you know how much money they're getting, what they're investing in, whatever have you. When I buy, when I walk out of BAI's main control room and I go all the way, by the time I get to the front door, because you have to go in that long hallway, I learn just by listen different conversations, I learn more about life and what's really happening in the world than I could ever learn in any of the other places because people are talking about real things. And these other places, which summed it all up for me for commercial radio. Because it's like it's like it's like it's like cops, it's like everything. Everything is about 
money, how you're going to pay for your house and your kid's dental bill, whatever the heck it is. And then they now talk about real, you know, I, I like to say downtrodden things, you know. But I, I just had to throw that in there about Roscoe because he really appreciated just being at BAI. <laughs> it's like it's, yeah. it's like his balance, his sanity, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, anyway, back to A.B. Spellman. So, you know, you had A.B. and, you know, you had these other things that were going on on FM radio on occasion. And, uh, I mean, it was all important, uh, you know, really important. Um, you know, Sun Ra has had an impact. You know, you got these people talking about Afrofuturism now. And, you know, the original Afrofuturist is Sun Ra, man. Well, no. I mean, you know, I... Unbelievably so. Basir, 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 hold on a second now. Come on, can we give all these young people a break? Everybody, they don't, people don't understand, break. people don't understand cycles and all the rest of that no, stuff. You know, I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm just saying that that's the original. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, Sun Ra, you know, they had this series on HBO now called Lovecraft Country. I heard about it. Yeah. And two weeks ago, they're doing this scene, uh, you know, this, this woman, uh, you know, goes through a portal somewhere else, you know, and she, she can move into the future, into the past or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they have a recording of Sun Ra talking. This is on HBO now. I was looking in the credits to see if there would, there would be any specific credit for it. What, but was, I didn't see anything. Was he was he having a conversation with somebody talking? Was he just talking? No, he was just he was just talking. Okay. You know, he was talking about. I mean, what Sun Ma talked about, you know, mm -hmm. space and mm -hmm. the future and whatever. I mean, I'll probably go ahead and look at it again so I can identify more specifically where Sun Ra. Uh, you know, where, where that particular sound came from. But the fact of the matter is, it was there. Okay, it was there, embedded in this series that premiered in 2020 called Lovecraft Country, which has black people, of course, as the uh, the main drivers of this story. And I don't know where the story is going because there's, you know, all kinds of stuff going on. There's history, there's Magic, there's supernatural stuff, there's HP Lovecraft, yeah. all kinds of you stuff. You know what's weird? I'm right. here, I mean, I got this big 65 inch thing here, and I really don't watch it, you know, and I've heard about this stuff. No, I, I think I think when I get back to New York next week, then I might, I might take the week and, and catch up on these kind of things. I might not, who knows, because I just I can't get into TV. I, can, I don't understand why I just can't get into it. I just can't. No, I hear you. I mean, I you know, my thing is, look, you know, I'm going to look at the basketball game tonight. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, the, the Lakers should probably take Miami out tonight, most, <laughs> most likely. You know, I'll watch that. I don't watch football. Everybody, everybody has it in for it. No, but I've been doing a lot of reading right now. I just got, I literally just got in the mail yesterday, the Gerald Horn book, uh, The Dawning of the Apocalypse. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, man. I'm so... I'm so hyped up to read this thing, you know? So yeah. I don't know if I'll get back to TV at all, but, you know. Yeah. Like so anyway, about... back, to, back to DAI. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's this relationship in regards to um, that. And then, you know, as we move ahead, you know, into the, uh, the 70s, you know, there's all this political stuff going. 60, 1968, Julius Lester, that's, has yeah. uh, G2 AUC on the program, and that's where he reads this poem by a student, which has gotten G2 branded as an anti Semite, as if, in fact, it was his words that. or anything else. And as that. if Julius Lester did not really go ahead and convince him uh, against his will, against G2's will, to read this particular poem. Mm. That's 68. Right. Mm. So, you know, at that particular point, I guess we have a, uh, a, a kind of somewhat adversarial relationship with, you know, WBAI. You know, I, I graduate, I, I go to the East organization, I become a member, uh, you know, I've got a family, and, you know, things going on or whatever. And I mean, one of the things about the East is aside from all of the political and cultural work, educational work that we did, one of the things that many people associate with the East 
is the music that was played there. Yeah. Now and the that East, was the, every weekend. The East, we had these musical shows. The East we should know no note is in Brooklyn. Hold on right there. Let's put a pin. I want to do another section on just you know just the East before we get back to BAI. <laughs> 